JST 245 mid 90s 1990s transceiver made by JRC Japan Radio Company LTD now this is my little go around with this rig it's it's a, a nice rig it's a nice rig and that's why I'm kind of doing a little oh overview and short review of it uh, it is, to my knowledge, the last in the line that they made. Um, kind of a culmination of things. They had a 145 that was uh, 100 watts, and I believe a tuner was an add-on. I don't think it had 6 meters for the 145, but I could be wrong on that. Anyways, so um, beautiful rig. Uh, this is, of course... Purchase used. I owned one a number of years ago and was sorry I got rid of it and this came across my board for trade and uh, I went and did it. So it's an all mode uh, operation um, on all HF bands and six meters on this thing. Um, it does have a built-in tuner. I'm going to give this a little spin around as we go here so you guys can take a look at it. Uh, it's MOSFETs in the uh, PA. Um, for as they claim low distortion. Rated output is 10 to 150 watts. I get a good look at the back side there. And it does more than 150 watts on peaks. I see 180 sometimes. Uh, automatic tuner with uh, memories in it. Uh, multiple antenna selection. More on that later. Um, general coverage receiver, 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz plus uh, 48 to 54 megahertz. Electronic, electronically tuned front end filtering, quad FET mixer and quadruple conversion. Triple conversion for if you go to FM. Uh, very good dynamic range, 100 dB and third order intercept of uh, plus 20 dBm. So a little get specky with you here. Uh, standard filters 2.4. It can be uh, narrowed uh, to 100 hertz with the variable bandwidth control. Okay, one of the rig earlier rigs to start doing that. This guy you can narrow it with that. Um, down to 800 hertz. Uh, narrow sideband CW filters for second and third IF are optional. This one has none at this point. Um, the 455 IF Kenwood filters will work 100% in this, I am told. A little easier to find, probably, too. Um, Band pass, shift, uh, noise blanker, and it's you get you get a couple different sets on this. One is just you set yourself. The other is it kind of does its own thing. Same with the notch tracking. Um, three step RF attenuation, selectable AGC, and I, I do like the attenuation here. Just with the switch, six dB, twelve, and eighteen. Um, the notch tracking is nice. Uh, DDS phase lock loop system, single crystal direct synthesis system is utilized for very low phase noise. I can hear some phase noise on here. I do hear it. If you turn the volume down when you initially turn it on, you can hear it. But just uh, doesn't bother you. Turn up, turn it up, and away, away you go. Um, dual VFOs uh, for split operation. Uh, full break in, variable CW pitch, built in keyer, up to 60 words per minute. Um, the 200 memories, channels, uh, they store the mode, the AGC, bandwidth, blah, blah, blah. Computer interface. Now it has the uh, beautiful uh, RS-232 on the back. But I do have the RS-232 to USB. That works fine. 
Of course, these being an older radio, you do not have a built-in sound card, so you have to have a little box to do that sort of situation. I'm not using this radio like this at this point. I do have the amplifier uh, cable also with it. And apparently uh, JRC made an external tuner that you could hook up to this, which is pretty cool. Um, it's pretty ergonomic and the power supply is heavy duty. Uh, of course it has to be a little more robust than the uh, standard stuff. So uh, that's the deal with that. Um, of course uh, RX in and out, keyer, on off. Um, this is, uh, I believe, the push to talk line. I do have the uh, JRC external speaker, which I'll give you a look at that once I hook this all up. Um, it has three fans in it. It's got two fans going across the heat sink for inside the PA. And it's got this fan here that kind of throws stuff. I think it's blowing it out. Yeah, it would blow it out. Um, this rig came to me from a four-lander with uh, no uh, discussion of, uh, oh, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. So, of course, <laughs> there's a few things that aren't right with it that I haven't dug into too deep yet, and I will. Number one, my mic uh, adjustment does not work. It always seems like it's maxed out. Number two, when I go to switch antennas, I can only have antenna one. It gives me a naughty sound, which I'll enter, show you when I try to go to the other antennas. There's a separate board for that with little relays and stuff on it, and I probably need to get into that. A lot of this is surface mount technology. So uh, be wary on that if you're afraid to get into these things. Um, you'll be sending it off to somebody to work on. So let me uh, get this sucker hooked up and uh, we'll play a little bit and uh, show you what's happening with that. I did not have a microphone with it. So, excuse me, all I had was uh, I had a, a correct uh, new connector here, 8 pin. Unfortunately, that's what I had. <laughs> Maybe I need to block that up, but it does seem to work fine with it. Um, this is Yesu wiring. Um, it's dynamic, uh, but it does have nine volts, so uh, on the on the plug, so you could probably you could definitely run a condenser mic, uh, uh, yeah, an electric uh, type mic. Uh, but I'm getting good reports on how I have it set up as it is with this crummy CB mic. Uh, pretty generic, you know, microphone element. Uh, but um, let me, like I said, let's get this thing hooked up and uh, be back with you in a second. Okay. Let me, uh, so here's a speaker. It's the uh, NVA uh, 313. And you got the kind of usual stuff high cut, low cut, two, two inputs if you wish, phone connector. Go from there. Let's uh, turn the volume down a little bit. Okay. So, let me uh, slide over here so you guys get a little better view of what's going on. Uh, it is uh, like midday, so let's go to let's go to 40 meters right now and see what we can tune around. Oop, I got it locked. I know we had a solar flare, so it's going to be a little flaky. Okay, not hearing a lot. There we go. Okay, we'll leave it right there for now. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit more on things so you can take a look at what everything looks like. Okay, we 
Pull her out a bit. Okay. So one other thing is <laughs> this guy. It's not mechanical, it's electronic. The felt pad is missing behind this thing. I didn't have anything for it, so it was driving me nuts. It, it, you got two increments. You've got this tuning here, your 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 smallest tuning increment right there, okay? And you've got this guy right here, which you can just blaze through, you know, the bands. But the problem is right now, whoops, you go back. Is it, it's a little touchy. So, anyways, what I did is I put a rubber washer that I had laying around on the back side of this, and it locks it in better. Because before it was it was ridiculous, <laughs> and I figure it would just wear in. But I'm gonna have to find the felt pad that goes behind that, or something. You know, I can purchase uh, and make my own little felt. It's just a felt circle that goes behind it, and it'll, it helps stop when you want to stop. Otherwise, the damn thing keeps going. So the band's crummy. Let's say uh, hit the tuner. And it's tuned, okay. Uh, off center fed dipole, 80 meter version, up at uh, 40 foot. The funky thing about this rig that everybody that owns it complains about is the meter switch. Okay. Nothing happens to the meter until you push the talk. So if I push the talk, SWR, ALC, hello, 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 see how high that goes. Compression, it does have a compressor, I don't run it. Check, check. Okay. So Canada's coming in pretty good apparently. So let's go through this a little bit. I've got it on slow AGC. There's your fast AGC. Okay. It lets me go to an intermediate setting, even though I don't have any, I've got just the stock 2.4. It won't let me go to narrow on there. For some reason, it'll let me go to narrow on AM, though. Wide. Now, here's the bandwidth control. This works nice. Real tight. So it's not bad if you don't if you have one with no filters in it. This is stock setup. It's really not too bad. Bandpass. Bandpass works as normal. RF gain. You've got your typical memory VFO that sort of thing. Okay. Monitor. It'll light up, but you'll get nothing because monitor was an add-on board for this radio. <laughs> Don't ask me why. JRC did a lot of that crap. And this one does not have the monitor. Not a big deal. The compression works great. I don't use it at 150 watts. I don't need the compression. Especially with this mic gain, you know, maxed out. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. But I'm going to have to get into it on this rig. It's very well shielded. It's got metal plates over everything. Um, in fact, the whole face plate, there's a metal plate behind that in order to access all this stuff. So yeah, it's a pill to work on. But it's a very nice, well put together transceiver top-notch stuff all the way through it they didn't skimp on anything okay this situation with the antenna changing I 
don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I can't, I, I have no idea. It should switch to these other antennas, selections. So I think there's something wrong with the board I have. But it doesn't affect, I mean, there's one antenna hooked up to the thing, so it's not how I run my, my stuff. I just need one antenna deal on the back. Um, what else can I tell you about it? It's, I mean, as far as inter interference fighting capabilities, it's fantastic. It's a great rig. It's not a digital rig. It's an analog rig, but it's one of the better analog rigs from the 90s. And JRC was not sold as much in America. It just wasn't that big over here. Places did sell them, but it was not like a home run. And I can't tell you why. Maybe it was their marketing. I don't know. But that's all I can say. Um, you've got, of course, your RIT. Usual stuff there. Um, let's go to 40 meters. Well, let's see what this guy is. Maybe we can actually contact this guy. He's in Arkansas. Let's try him. November 9, Alpha Mike India, N9 AMI. N9 AMI. November 9, Alpha Mike India. So it was about 150 watts on my LP100. And I can pan over there if you'd like. Some people are saying BS. I'll show you that just for demonstration here. November 9, Alpha Mike India, and 9 AMI. So there you go, you get the idea. November 9, Alpha Mike idea. So she does put out a little juice, and I'll tell you what, it'll drive an app pretty nice. If you got an app that, uh, like my big Henry, that'll take uh, 150 watts input, <laughs> it loves it. November 9, Alpha Mike India. Okay. So let's turn around a little bit. Uh, we don't want AM. It, uh, by the way, it does work pretty nice on AM. 30, 30 watts or so carrier. Uh, do a sideband. Here we go. Trade data shipping. There's a Lido LM wet mount in the box. It's free to pay the shipping. There you go. A little swap net that happens on the West Coast. Apologize for the uh, ICOM 736 HF plus 6 meter 100 watt. As you can hear, it's got nice audio. Condition with an SM6 mic and manual. 450, all this stuff is pickup. Matching external speaker 35, external box unit for the 736 45. Sure 526 T desk mic for a quarter or best. Got a preamp. Our power meter 125. Which we don't, I don't usually use it on, except upper bands. Number 1111, KCKDT Allen, and Emerald Hill. Okay. <laughs> All right, 73, Ray. That was Kilo Fox Truck 7, Charlie Yankee Golf. Uh, Ray in Camp Verde. Okay, anybody else like to check in? Yeah, Let me give you guys a little bit different shot one? because uh, we get this funky uh, lighting in here, okay? Okay, thank you, 20 over, it sounds That's good. Nice okay, right, anybody you. else like to check in, get a signal report and a radio check and answer the question of the day. Come now. Seven, ACB. Anybody, anywhere, come. November 9, Alpha, Mike, India. 
number nine, Alpha Mike India, QSL. Yeah, QSL, good signal into Nevada today, uh, put me down there, name is John, and uh, just uh, running in and out of the raindrops. Roger that, well, stay on the dry side of the door. We'll do a uh, quick signal report here, I haven't used this rig in a long time, an old JST-245. The last transmission was uh, about a 15 over, two five copy. Okay, well thank you much, have a good one, and 9 AMI. There were others. Say Yeah, we don't want to talk to that guy. CW Beacon for you. Sometimes the fast AGC get a little bit of a little bit of pumping on the receive, just depending on the signal. I think the RF amplifier actually brings in too much. If I throw in a little attenuation. Anyway, um, how about 10 meter FM? I can do that. Let's go to FM. Let's see if we get anybody up here today. Yes, we do. snickety thing on there. There you go. Uh, I gotta check my ten on this one. There we go. Oh, actually, I have to switch antennas on that, but it'll work. It'll be fine. It's only two to one here on this antenna. So, um, what you gotta do, shift, And you're good to go. And 9 AMI, Nevada. Yeah, sorry about that, Pete. My battery's died. I'll get back to you in a bit there. I just got a phone call. Real easy with the, for the repeater shift on this. You can jack around with anything. It does not have a tone. It does, that's another thing. You got to get a tone board separately, but you don't really need it. Not for 10 meters anyway. And we should be throwing the squelch on. And that was just a whole other station. There we go. And 9 AMI. See if anybody comes back. Maybe, maybe not. Tune around a little bit, huh? Let's try 20. 60. 20. 
This thing's a real pill. I'll tell you, I gotta get that felt. Nothing. No kachunkies there. Let's go to 6-6. Six, six. Pretty weak. That's not the greatest. 6-8. There's a guy on 6-7 in North Carolina. Barely hitting him. <laughs> so not the best day out here, but, uh, you know, it's there. Try 6-8. And 9 AMI. Not a. Anyways, you get the point. You've got FM. You can go to 6 meters. We can drop the squelch. Not getting anything there. And 9 AMI. Dealt the mic. 0 9. Ten is flat there, so and nine AMI Delta Mike zero nine Nevada. Nada. So a little bit of test tuning around there. There's somebody on fifteen. And nine AMI. Uh, roger, roger. Don't hit you super strong here, but here you're calling CQ. Uh, name is John, uh, out in Silver Springs, Nevada. Uh, you're about a about a four and three. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll give you I'll give you the signal report next go around. I'm, I'm just guessing at it now, but uh, I do hear you out here. Uh, 150 watts and a dipole here. Over. Okay, well, I'm showing you a solid 5 and 2. How's that here? And uh, this is a uh, JRC JST 245 transceiver uh, from the 90s, and I'm using a uh, off-center fed dipole up at 40 foot. So we're, we're pretty darn close. I got, I got about 50 watts, so uh, maybe a little bit more on you, but that's about it. So uh, very good, man. Roger, Roger. Well, very good on the WA1 Portable 9, and uh, have fun out there. Thanks for uh, running that, and uh, I'm sure uh, you'll run into a lot of contacts. Band seems a little rough today. I guess maybe we had solar flares, so I, I don't know. Just tuning around here and doing a little review on this uh, JST245. But appreciate you, and uh, have fun. And 9 AMI. There you go. Look at the crap it brought in on this one, and there's that wonderful tuning deal. Anybody has any felt pads for this? Send me a message, send me one. That really sucks in the juice, man. Sometimes it's a little much, in my opinion. It's a little much. But it's a noisy band today, so, you know, it's, that's all I can say. So that's the uh, JRC JST245. I like the rig a lot. It's a keeper. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I need to. I do need to address this situation because it's driving me nuts. I got to get the rubber washer off the back, and it's real simple to pull this off and get some of those felt uh, felt washers on there, so it'll tune properly. Without them on there, that baby will go across the whole band with just. A thing and there is no break there's no break on this mechanical break because it's an electronic vfo and, you know it's a, there's no there's no break to deal with that um other than that it's it's a nice rig it has very nice audio um 
I will address this guy here. I have to take the whole front end apart and it could be maybe, pff, who knows, maybe it's just disconnected. Uh, I doubt it. Um, there was somebody in this rig at one point because there was a bunch of screws sticking up that they didn't screw down on top of the tuner. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, so yeah, wasn't happy with the trade uh, with this four call guy, but um, I'll make it work. Um, and that's, you know, that's a video for another day, the hassles of uh, buying uh, used ham gear these days. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a little scuff up on top here and maybe a little scuff right here, but it, it's clean. It's a clean rig other than that. And for the most part, transmit receive wise, we're fine. Tuner wise, it's fine. Uh, I looked at it on the scope. It looks clean on transmit on all, all modes. So uh, I haven't stuck a key on there, but I know they're decent CW rigs too. Um, and I, like I said, I probably will uh, slap some filters in here and uh, just to just to have a CW filter and uh, you know non non stock and a uh, another a sideband filter, uh, so I get more selections, and that's the deal with it. JST two forty five Japan Radio Company Corporation from about nineteen ninety five, and um, it had a lot of competition back then uh, with the other companies. Uh, you know one thousand MP and. Um, 756 Pro, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I think they got their butts kicked pretty good on advertising in the U.S., but they did well elsewhere, and they have a very good name for themselves. So, uh, that's the rig. Hope uh, maybe this uh, steered you if into maybe purchasing one. Um, and. Um, if you got any questions, comments, please drop them below. Like, share, subscribe, Wavelength Radio, appreciate that. And uh, try to just bring you some real world stuff and no, no BS. And uh, watch for some more reviews on some of these older rigs I have. And uh, you guys might uh, have some interest in that sort of stuff. Take care.